this is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another small land video. Today we're going to talk about the best foods in the game. Let's get to it. So we're going to talk about the three best foods that you should be eating that correspond with the three different stages of the game. So starting off you get the campfire, then you get the cauldron, and then you get the stone oven. So starting off with the campfire phase, the best food that you should be eating is the mushroom steaks, followed closely by the ant skewers, but you're going to quickly move on to places where there aren't as many of the ants so you won't be farming these as much but you don't really use these for a whole lot so well currently in the current stage of the game you don't use them for a whole lot and as you can see they give you the exact same bonus 30 nourishment and they block your nourishment loss for 180 seconds that's it so ant skewers followed by mushrooms now where can you get a ton of mushrooms over here on the map is a giant mushroom forest and it's just full of mushrooms. Let me show you. So here we are over here in the mushroom forest. So each of these mushrooms should give you anywhere between two and three mushroom pieces, allowing you to make a steak. You can see there we got three from that one, three from the previous one. If you need a ton of these, you just want to come over and farm up a bunch of food at one time. This is a great place to come. It's a rather large area and it expands all the way down and around around over here as well you will find even more mushrooms along with a bunch of the poisonous mushrooms you can harvest those while you're over here you will need those later but you can see here's another group of the good edible mushrooms there's also not a whole lot over there in that mushroom area that will mess with you while you are farming other than one or two beetles most of what's over there is just butterflies moving on to the cauldron phase so the cauldron phase has a bunch of different stuff and just like with the campfire phase it all does pretty much the same thing with the exception of a few of these dishes do not have cold protection as you can see the forest delight does not have cold protection but a lot of the other ones do so we want something that has cold protection because that's going to be our best option we also want something that's going to be easy to farm and for that we have the fey chowder fey chowder is your easiest option out of all of these and that is because all you need to do to make this is kill beetles and harvest garlic leaf i'm going to show you the best place to farm all of this. So I'm over here at one of the most fantastic trees to put your base at. You can see where I am here on the map. And the reason for this is, is there is everything that we need over here for the cauldron stage of the game, food wise. So you can see right here, we have a bunch of hedge garlic. This hedge garlic is where obviously you get the garlic leaf. And once we get to the bottom of this vine, all we have to do is jump down over here. And right off the bat, we have a bunch of beetles. You can see there's a beetle there, there's a beetle there. And if we come down and around this way you'll see that we run into some more hedge garlic as well as a bunch more beetles there's nothing but beetles and garlic around here as far as the eye can see now one of the things that you can do to make killing these beetles easy is get this spear which you can get very early game called the stinger lance if you take a look here the stinger lance makes very short work of these guys if i hit him with a heavy attack it just absolutely destroys them. This thing has absolutely insane stats on it and you don't have to do anything special other than go pick it up and I'm going to show you where to get it. Okay, so the easiest way to find the spot that I'm going to show you is to come to this location here on the map. This right here is the location that we want to go to. This is where you will find the spear. Just find this giant sign and what you are going to do is once you find this giant sign, you are just going to run straight underneath of it. Now be careful. There are things here that will attack you. I'm currently in peaceful mode so that I can show you these things without being attacked. So there's a hornet right here. If you run a little bit to the side here, right about here, you should be able to run right past that hornet without being attacked at all and just completely bypass him. You want to look for this grate in the ground right here. See down below there. You want to look for that. And then you are going to just run right in this direction here. You can see where I have these two torches placed. The hole that we're looking for 
is that hole right there. So you can see there the sign is in the background. You're going to jump down here and then you're going to jump down to here and this is the hole that you want. There's really nothing other than that hornet there that's going to mess with you as you can see if you just stay on the path and run straight to this hole here. Now once we get down inside this hole, that's a completely different story. There are things down here. You want to hold back as you are hitting each of these ledges. So tap forward just a little bit, hold back so that you catch the wall and slide down, rinse and repeat, and you won't take any fall damage and you can fall down nice and easy as you see there. Now, once you initially fall down here, there's a roach over there. There's nothing over to that side. So you're in the clear there. The roach should not notice you when you initially fall down. You are going to have to run past it though. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come over here and we are going to run past it. However, it's not going to attack us and it's not the biggest threat because they're relatively easy to outrun. Your big threat are these little punks right here and there are a bunch of them. They hit like an absolute truck and they all will swarm you at the same time. So once you jump down this little ledge here, you want to make sure you have plenty of stamina and let your stamina regen. You are going to run up here till you get to about where the roach is. Let your stamina regen, sprint again, and continue to sprint until you get all the way to this thing. You are going to immediately grab it and log out so that you can be back at your base. It's right here. The flies will take a second before they realize you're there and swarm you. You only have a split second to run up here, grab this thing, hit escape, and log out. That's all there is to it. Once you have that spear and you log back in, you will log back into wherever your spawn point is set. Hopefully it's in a tree in your base. Moving on to the stone oven stage of the game. Once you hit the stone oven stage of the game, the best and easiest thing that you can craft is the caramelized bee heads. It takes one nectar, one honey crumble, and one bee head to make one of these. It nourishes you for 70 and it blocks the nourishment loss for 720 seconds. And of course, I'm going to show you an absolute fantastic place where you can harvest all three of these things quick and easy. We are over here at the absolute best place to farm everything you need for caramelized bee heads. And that is over here at Drastana. Somebody that you should be talking to early on in the game is the best place for late game food. And that is because over here you will find bees and you will find poppies. Poppies will give you petals, nectar, and seeds. Let me chop one down here to show you. As you can see, we got one nectar, one petal, one seed, and it can vary a little bit what you get between them. I'll harvest another one. There you go. We got two seeds from that one. And we also have an abundance of bees. And attacking them will get you all the stuff that you need. Bee heads, wings, and honey crumble, and stingers. And there is also an abundance of honey crumble in the area that you can just pick up. There is a bunch of it on the ground. Right here is some. And if we come around to the side here, there will be even more. You can see there's a bunch of it over here on the side as well. We can just pick it up off the ground and continue to run around here and find more bees. You can see here we go. We have a bunch more bees. Now do keep in mind that this is going to be later in game that you're going to be harvesting this food anyway. So you should be able to handle these. If I smack them and get them all to swarm me, you can see that whole group it's at the same time decides to swarm me. And that's a lot of hits at one time. But I also have the end game mace, which allows me to just absolutely destroy these bees. So with just that little bit there, we managed to walk away with, where's my bee heads? 11 bee heads, 12 crumble, and three nectar because I didn't harvest enough poppies, but you know, you could just harvest poppies. All right, and that is pretty much it for this one. Hopefully you found this video helpful and informational. If you did, consider hitting the subscribe button and a notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. And if you're looking for another small land video from me, you can find a link to that on the screen right now. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.